Morning, Mr. Shaw. Everything's set for your dinner party. The guy stole from everyone who works in your building. They're gonna get our money. It's all gone. I'm thinking of becoming a male prostitute. I think I might have a better idea. So you're saying you want to rob $20 million from Arthur Shaw's penthouse apartment? Yes. You're going to go to jail. Yes. You're going to die. Probably yes. both. Yeah. Yes. Join me. I, I love the dynamic you guys have. You're kind of looking at each other, these two characters, and, and neither of you think that, that the other has what it takes to survive in their own world, but you end up surprising each other. So I kind of wanted to ask, who has been that person that you've worked with, whether it be an actor or a director, that you looked at them and you thought, I'm not sure if that person has what it takes, but then they really ended up surprising you? Wow. That's interesting. I don't want to say this in a bad way, because Brett is a very competent director, but I know Brett, I've known Brett for a long time, and he is, has this ebullient, sort of effusive personality where you could sometimes underestimate his seriousness as a director. Mm. Um, but it's all, sort of his secret weapon, which is that he, he keeps it light and lively and fun, but then behind it all, he's like a monster who really doesn't stop till he gets what he wants. So Brett sort of has that, not that I didn't think he had it in him because right, I wouldn't have done it with him. A pleasant but he, surprise. It was a pleasant surprise from a guy who I have known for a long time and I, I think he did an amazing job with the movie. That's good. That's interesting. That's, that's is that somebody. a backhanded something? No, no, no that no. makes okay, total good. sense. Yeah. I'm trying to think of someone. Did, did I not think they had the goods going into it? Or right. I, thought, oh, I, don't, I don't know if I'm, I can think of a, if, I don't know if I would go into something with someone that I didn't think right. had the goods. Mm -hmm. I've been in situations with actors where I've been on the set, they'll be like a great actor, and you'd be like, I want to see what they're doing. It makes them so great. And you get on the set, and you'd be like, what the fuck? I can't see shit. I look like shit. <laughs> I'll give you a, a, great, a great example. When you work with James Earl Jones, right. James Earl Jones, what he does is so subtle. He's this master actor. And you'll see it in the editing room, you'll see it. But on the set, it just looks like, what? You don't even realize really? the lit, all this little stuff that he's giving you, all this little stuff. I, I nicked this uh, thing from, uh, uh, what's, uh, Wynton, uh, Marcellus, Wynton Marcellus says, the highest form of technique is nuance, you know, mm -hmm. so he's one of those actors where he could just do stuff, mm -hmm. just it's subtleties, just, you see it when you go to cut your movie, but when you're sitting on the stage with him, it's like, so this is your shit that you got here? <laughs> <laughs> and then you go see it cut together and realize he blew you off the screen. <laughs> I'm in. I'm in. Well, now we're undefeatable, aren't we? Let's storm the castle together. We're not criminals. We don't know how to steal. And that's the one who does. You made bail. Mm -hmm. Today I taught you how to pick a lock with a bobby pin. Here's your bobby pin. This is your bobby pin. This is your punk ass bobby pin. You unlock the door, you won't freeze to death. I'm gonna be inside having sex with Rita. Who's Rita? I'm in a restaurant across from the tower. What are you doing? It's supposed to be a secret. I didn't say which restaurant across from the tower. Can't afford to eat here anyway. We can order whatever we like. Lunch is on me. I'm, you know, honestly, I'm looking at this cast, and I feel like everyone in this cast has such a great filmography of characters that they have done throughout their career. And I was wondering, if you could steal one character that someone from the cast has done, just to be able to, to try it out for yourself and see how you could do that character, who, who, who would it be and which character would it be? This is a tough one. I didn't, I didn't mean to get Barbara Walters on you guys. I, I didn't mean to get too serious. I would like to improve the performance in Gone Baby Gone. Because <laughs> <laughs> you only have one, Maybe you can only go up from there. The word is believable. <laughs> um, that's good, that's uh, a good bit. Maybe um, Heartbreak Kid was, I like the original movie so much, and I know that's why Ben Stiller remade it, and I maybe would like that, because I think it's a kind of fun, it's a good character to play. I would love to be Eddie Murphy from The Golden Child. I would love a little leather koofy hat. <laughs> Did you guys see this side of Gabby whenever you were on set with her? Like all the time. <laughs> She's insatiable. <laughs> I, one of my favorite interview moments ever, the first time I ever interviewed Gabby was for Precious in Toronto. And as I'm walking out of the room, thank God the camera was still rolling. She said, Jake Hamilton, you're hot. I did say that. I totally wow. remember you from that, too. See? <laughs> so, my oh, life's been downhill since then. Still hot, Jake <laughs> Hamilton. This is good stuff. <laughs> this is one room I'll of pretty I'll step people. outside. <laughs> in a robbery, you have to be ready to adapt at any moment. Oh, you got your ears. How is this supposed to be right if you made it out of Legos? Dimensions are completely accurate. You might as well use Lincoln Logs or Tinker Toys. And who's this? Webster? One of the things I love about this movie is that there are so many timeless themes to it, but yet it is still a very contemporary movie with everything going on with, with Madoff and, and the financial crisis. 
and I, I love that that's, that's one of those things that you have to find, you have to be able to find humor in it to deal with. When you guys were growing up, what was that, what was that dark time that you felt was best dealt with just laughing at it? Well, how about when you lived through the Great Depression? <laughs> <laughs> oh, all day, folks. We're here all day. <laughs> we, we can just keep going. Oh, good stuff. Woo. What was the worst time you lived through? No, I'll tell you something very interesting, though. I remember going to my grandmother, and this was, I was graduating in 1984, and it was a big Orwellian idea that everything was going to come to hell. And I was talking to her about it, and I said, and this is going to happen, and nuclear, you know, this is the height of the big nuclear issue. And my grandmother said, oh, I remember the first time it was the end of the world. Let me think, that was 1912. <laughs> and she said, and then in 1918, well, that was a doozy. And of course, oh, well, then there was World War II. Lovely. And I said, okay, okay, I get it. And she said, things aren't what they used to be, and they never were. And they and never this, will I, be. And they never will be. <laughs> yeah. I think you have to laugh at all of it. And right now, what's going on, it's not funny. The movie isn't, certainly not laughing at it by well, any means. But for less than two hours, you get to see a great Robin Hood film and let the good guys win. And the good guys will win. It's just going to take a little bit longer. It's so reassuring. And, and you know, <laughs> it tugs at your heart Doesn't the way it? you said it. I'm, I'm going to strangle you. The mate's gone rogue. Mess with me? Yeah, a dead man. I don't care what it takes. I will find a way to make things right. On and on and on. The real trick is getting away with it. Let's do it. Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade is just moments away. We got a dangler! I'm not going out there. So I hope you don't mind me asking. I, I, I always stay all the way through the credits and kind sure. of see if I can find something. And I saw in the special thanks that you thanked Roman Polanski. Yes. Which I thought was really interesting. I just kind of, curiosity, I kind of wanted well, to Well, not only is he one of my inspirations, but he's one of my friends, but he's the first person I showed the movie to. Mm -hmm. I went to Switzerland, showed him the movie, and he saw it, and he gave me the best notes of anybody, so I had to thank him. Is and that I, the most intimidating thing in the world to show a film to, to the person? That I think if I didn't know him, it would have been because he's like a master filmmaker. But we were just such good friends. I showed me his. I showed him my movie. He showed me his movie. He gave me notes. He said I couldn't give him notes. So <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask you what kind of notes he gave you? Um, music notes and some editorial, just some ideas he had, and they were so good. They worked so well right. that I just had to thank him for. Uh, for his help. I mean, it's just a personal. When you see someone's name, it's just, you never know what's behind it, but it was just a personal exactly. little thank you. I will blow your face clean off your face. Whoops. What the hell were you doing? You start foaming up in the mouth and your eyes go crooked. It was very scary. 